these I have an opportunity to sell for the next to the wall. Thanks, man. I've been nervous, man. <laughs> uh, Paul, Debbie, Amy, Sarah, Claire, and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, what an honour it is for me to have the opportunity to speak at this wonderful occasion celebrating the outstanding career of Paul. I must first acknowledge Debbie. Being a partner, or in case a loving wife to a policeman, is no easy feat. Let alone for 38 years. Congratulations to you, Deb, and a resounding round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd also like to acknowledge Jim Anderson and Derek Foster, who are fellow classmates from class 205 in 1984, who are here this evening. Derek slipped in a uh, covert oh. appearance. And it's wonderful oh. to see you here, man. I tell you. I also might add a caveat has been placed on this speech. So no stories will be told out of school. However, feel free to chat with me later. <laughs> I first met Paul at the New South Wales Police Academy as a fellow class member of Class 205. We both then commenced duty together as fresh-faced probationers at Number 3 Division, including Derek. Darlinghurst in August 1984. Darlow was a busy station back in the 80s, and there are many funny stories from our time there, but they are not for tonight's occasion. <laughs> Sometime after duty at Darlinghurst, Fredo went north to Coffs Harbour and commenced his country service. Paul and I have been rock solid mates for all those years. In fact, I was a groomsman at Paul's wedding, at Debbie's wedding, rather. <laughs> Paul had to get in the ship. Had to get in the. Sorry, Mrs. Parrish. Um, had to get in the ship. Um, you don't mention the wife. So, so I was a groomsman at uh, Paul and Debbie's wedding, and Paul was my best man at my wedding. The bond is strong, my brother. I recently had the opportunity to visit Paul and Debbie in their home, and had a wonderful few days catching up, which was full of country hospitality, some laughs, and good fellowship. Now we all know that Fredo has run and been involved in some major investigations over the years. Pressure maximised. Ladies and gentlemen, Fredo's change. It was on the afternoon of the first day I arrived and it became time to have a cleansing ale, a top-notch keg, Homebrew from a tap on the front veranda overlooking the beautiful vista, vista of Lismore as the afternoon started to descend. All of a sudden, Fredo bolted inside without any explanation whatsoever. As a caring mate, I went inside to check on Fredo's welfare, assuming he may have consumed the dodgy vindaloo from the previous evening from the local Indian restaurant or something. How wrong I was. He had fired up a professional coffee machine to ensure that his deputy had a wonderful coffee presented to her upon her arrival in the driveway at 4.30pm on the dot. Fredo is a good and dutiful husband, and it's wonderful to see. Fredo's work ethic, I am sure, will be spoken about by others. But, mate, it is nice to know that you are now no longer cuffed to the job and are now a civilian. Time is on your side now, Fredo. There are no urgent jobs to respond to. 
just yours and Debbie's dreams for what to do next and explore Australia in that wonderful Taj Mahal caravan <laughs> you have purchased. You deserve a wonderful retirement for that. And I wish you all the best as you take on civilian life. There is a life after all outside the cops. Your, your career accomplishments are indeed a testament to the man you are. A man whose family, friends and colleagues are proud to know. It is quite fitting, ladies and gentlemen, that today is New South Wales Police Retired Police Day. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Just one more thing, folks. In closing, I have one more thing to say to my brother. Goodbye, pension. Hello, pension. <laughs> Thanks very much.